He's a Seattle comedian. Uh, he loves his beard. Uh, it's a very great beard, by the way. He's a, he's a black bearded man with glasses. I asked him to write that. <laughs> if you don't believe me, look at the notes later. Uh, put your hands together for Abraham! But, if you could just blink hella hard for Kenny. <laughs> I'm watching, blink. <laughs> I saw you give me a wink, that was cool. Alright, that feels pretty good. Let me see some blinks, a little more blinks, blinks, blinks. Blinks, cameraman, blinks, blinks. Blinks, you're not, you need a blink. <laughs> Alright, I know the rules for this goddamn state. Watch this state, it's a pay- you know what? Just put, hey, I'm happy to be here. I'm really big on contracts and unions and whatnot. You know, okay, I don't. Are you guys union? Not union? You're not union. You're not fucking union. I don't know if I'm pro war against union. Okay, but I'm talking love because my father, he works in trucks. You know, he's he's been, you know. Yeah, he doesn't. Why are you laughing? You, you, are you unique? Because he's younger, but you're older. But you have a little more mystique about you because you got a coat on, but he doesn't. Are you union or not? You're not union. I'm talking to myself now. Don't be union. Or do. It's honestly really like a treat to be here. Khadijah Hassan, can we blink for Khadijah real quick? Don't, don't I will shame you. Not you, Khadijah, you. Do not clap, no clap, especially for Khadijah. Me and Khadijah have been friends for years. How long have we known each other, Khadijah? Uh, five that, years. Five years, we've known each other five years. This whirlwind of a friendship. I talked to her because I can't really recollect the time that we actually met, but she agreed that what I'm going to say now was probably how we first like met each other. <clears throat> What's up, you black as fuck? Yeah, you two niggas, yeah. <laughs> and it was kind of like this, like the energy of like like a 1970s Italian mafioso. Guy. Hey, no, oh, hey, you fucking movie out. What's good? as well. Hey, oh. Wepa. That's Spanish. We were very intersectional with our words as well. <laughs> Love Khadija since I met her. And I've also hated her. Honestly. <laughs> honestly, I... <laughs> the relationship between me and Khadija is really... It, it's gone from like just, you know, hating each other to hating each other and loving each other. And... <laughs> I have this kind of like fantasy where I want like a group of black academics just to witness us for there's a black man laughing in the back and he knows us, his name's Kofi he knows what I'm talking about Kofi, you're black okay, alright, you're black hole don't spaghetti on me I get but I want a black anthropologist, a, bra a black sociologist, and just to be safe, just like a black, like, I don't know, just like a neuropsych, just around, just be like, okay, they're both sound of mind and body, but shit's still fucked up. <laughs> Three or four people from the NAACP and one, like, Trump appointee, just to be like, yeah, they're niggers, all right. I just, I want a solid panel of people to witness me and her talk for a good minute and a half. Because if you've been here for at least five minutes of this show, you've heard us scream at each other outside. Be like, yeah, nigga, you ISIS as fuck! And it doesn't, it makes no sense. Because we don't support terrorism, we don't, we 
hate that shit. We are pro culture in America, but we see each other and we have to say the worst shit. It's the most intimate of relationships that I've ever felt like hurt by. So dope. Uh, Khadija was talking about being 86 from McCoy's. Now, what McCoy's is, for those of you uh, on non union cameras, <laughs> understand? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's what I would uh, try to call a dive bar, but more or less, it's not a, a dive bar per se. Now, Olympia, as most of us know, is uh, we have the Evergreen State College, which is predominantly uh, a left leaning school. It's a public institution with a lot of people coming from around the country. True. It's a true fact. It's a true fact. Except for Weinstein. I don't know about Weinstein. I, I just recently watched this professor try to get into a fight with some students. He was holding his own. He fucked up. But anyway, Olympia is a mixture of those students, and then you have Thurston County. <laughs> Which is, no, honestly, from, again, I didn't know I was going to say this, but for the second time, if an anthropologist, like, really understood what was happening at that bar, they'd be like, oh, shit, this is, like, a mini Trump rally. <laughs> <laughs> but not like a, like a, oh, shit, 20 minutes till we go, bro. It's more like, shit, we've been here for five hours, bro. <laughs> this is a weird rally. <laughs> smoke some clothes. That's, that's, if you've never been to McCoy's, that's kind of the, the feel and the taste. And I've been to McCoy's many a time because uh, in my last year at Evergreen, uh, I did a, an internship with a, an advertiser and our meeting place was McCoy's. And he was an alcoholic and I said, I'm right with you. And I to McCoy's almost every day and I got a $2 mini pitcher which was about two to three pints of beer. I'm, I'm a-okay, because I'm broke and it's liquid bread. <laughs> awesome, okay? And I remember one time a guy came up to me and goes, yo, you fuck with McCoy's a lot? And I'm like, chip, chip, cheerio, of course I do. <laughs> I was already mad fucked up. And I was at a point where I was watching like a lot of Harry Potter and shit like that. Like, I was on this Disney like set, like I was just getting fucked up, be like, Yo, penguins can't dance and sing. The world is a blessing. Said, yeah, chip chips. And he goes, all right, cool. Hey, man, it's kind of cold. We're trying to get the heaters on because he knew some of the bartenders and the bar staff there, right? And he was just like, yo, I'm going to try to turn this on. And I went, oh, that? And I looked up. It's a heater, right? It's outside of the bar. And uh, I saw a little red on there. And I go, oh, what? Did you guys try to paint something up there recently? He goes, <laughs> no. He's <laughs> like, what? what's that red up there? He goes, I mean, <laughs> red flag number one. Someone has to go, I mean, when it comes to little droplets of red on like the top of something, something bad happened. And he goes, he goes yeah, some guy got his like, throat slashed over here. A couple months ago, it was like one of my good friends. You know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty upsetting and, you know, pretty sad of it. I went, oh shit. Fuck. Um, I'm sorry about your loss. And he took a couple beats and he was just like, hey man, two dollar pictures though. And that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's So, that's when Khadija got kicked out. And when I heard she got kicked out, Oh, good God, fuck. I just been outside on a table saying, motorboat me, mommy. <laughs> and look, I've been working on my titties for a minute, but they were not as popping as they are now. So I had some confidence. No one kicked me out. Now, that's McCoy's. And when Kadisha said McCoy's, it brought me back to an even darker, but more beautiful place in the city of Olympia's history. Jezebel's. <laughs> white and non-POC allies out here, I just want to ask the people of color in this room, do y'all remember Jezebel's? <laughs> and now for my white allies, y'all remember Jezebel's? Dollar 15! What'd you say? 
What the fuck? What do you mean, what the fuck? I mean, what the fuck was Jezebel? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we are. You've never heard of Jezebel? <laughs> <laughs> Like this, uh, it's crazy. No, you gotta be ant eater about it. Yeah. This, no, 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 y'all, y'all don't know. Listen, if you're ever eating pussy or sucking dick, it never hurts to lead in with a little tongue. Actually, I'm gonna write that down and tell my nephew that someday. When I that. That's horrifying to say, but with enough money and confidence, you could say it, and it sounds like that. Now, Jezebel's. <laughs> Jezebel's was kind of the anti. Is it okay if I place my beer? Yes. Cool. Ooh, velvet. <laughs> Jezebel's was the anti McCoy's. Now, being a black student in Seattle, not that hard. Right? You go to University of Washington, you got clubs. You got Seattle University, you got clubs. In Olympia, it's very difficult because there's not a lot of black people around. And again, you have students at the Evergreen State College. And then you got niggas from Thurston County. <laughs> now, there's not a lot of people of color in Thurston County, but you have people from Tacoma. You got people even farther away as Sumner. You got a lot of people of color wanting to have a good time. And none of them want to go to fucking Jake's. <laughs> Jake's is adorable, but Jake's is, was not... Listen, after a weekend, knowing my friends going to Jezebel's, I would be in class and be like, Yo, did you hear about that stabbing of Jezebel's? Yo, that night was lit, fam. That shit was fucking popping up. Everyone was break dancing and shit. Some guy got mad and stabbed somebody. It was a great... Actually, it is just like McCoy's. What? <laughs> 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 Yeah, no, it was a probably like personal color club. Like it was amazing, and I wish you guys could get into a time machine and <laughs> just bells. It was, actually, no, I don't. It was a terrible place. It was fun, but yeah, I'm glad it's not around anymore. <laughs> it's actually kind of a nightmare. We're gonna edit that out. <laughs> don't want to get hurt. Uh, a little about uh, about me. Uh, um, yeah, I won't preface it. Uh, I the first prank I ever just so you guys understand who I am. The first prank I ever done to somebody was my little sister, and she's five years younger than me, and her name's Hannah. Um, and I didn't have a lot of friends growing up, so at the age of seven, I was obsessed with Harry Potter, and I learned that Harry Potter got letters from Hogwarts. And me and Hannah were both reading Harry Potter books. So she knew off rip, like, yo, if you're a wizard, you're gonna get a letter. So I said, wow, I'm fucked up. Um, so I started writing letters, and because I was learning cursive at the time. So, <laughs> so in my mind, I went, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my first scam. <laughs> right, I'm gonna write, Yo, blood, um, you got in. Hogwarts, that is. I didn't know they had like colloquial like terms that like uh, Dumbledore would use. So I'd be like, homie, dude, you made it. Proud of you. <laughs> Welcome to England, and I spelled it with an A, because again, I wasn't learning spelling. Curse it. <laughs> and it wasn't once, twice, three times. No. Uh, multiple times over the span of two years. Whenever my parents, if I heard my parents go, all right, we're leaving, they would leave and I went, Harry Potter time. <laughs> and you are the shit, it's me, Dumbledore, ha ha, bitch. <laughs> it's interesting because I, I never had money as a child, but I learned to save up for two things. One, Mountain Dew. <laughs> Cause 
I know I'm black, but I'm an American. <laughs> Don't get it fucking twisted. It's a drink of immigrants. Actually, it's not. Fanta is. If you go to Africa, especially Ethiopia, you can get Fanta and Coca-Cola more than you can water. <laughs> Put that aside. <laughs> I'm write these notes. Put them outside. Slam on the fucking door from the inside. Run up my room, and I would hear my little sister go, "I don't know if someone's at the door. Help!" Because she's a kid. My parents. <laughs> My parents did this strategy growing up, they were just like, better safe than sorry. So they just told us, me and my two sisters, yo, if someone slams at the door, call the police. <laughs> Glad my sister was always a pun, because she never did. She was like, I don't know, call the police, I don't know if at the door. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I really went like Jake Gyllenhaal, and I was like, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> maybe she checked the door. <laughs> Mark. And she would check the door and for years, but like, oh, it's so fucked up. I still love it. She would like grab it up and be like, another one? You got another one. You got in again. I was like, oh, that's crazy. I'll just defer. <laughs> that's not fucked up. This is how I knew I lost her. Where she before I did it again, I was like, she was like, Abraham, someone's at the door. Will you check? I was like, ha, 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 yeah. I was like trying to be like a stepdad or something. Oh, oh, who's at the door? Who is it? Ah, I was still into it, but she wasn't. She's like, you got in again, whoop de doo And I check, I go, hey man, maybe you can get in, right? Maybe you can get in next year. Because I felt her energy. She wasn't into it anymore, which kind of hurt. Even though I forgot it was a prank. I thought it was a wee thing, but really it was a me being a dick thing. <laughs> And then uh, she converted to uh, astrology. So <laughs> never worked out again. Never. Speaking about astrology, who believes in astrological signs? Who? It's all right. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. All right. <laughs> I just want to know who not to talk to. <laughs> Uh, again, went to Evergreen, it was great. I met a guy uh, named Redbeard once. Uh, going to college can really prepare you for like understanding uh, schoolwork. It can help you understand kind of theories and, and hypotheses, whether it's uh, mathematics, uh, sociology, anthropology, uh, any of the apologies, <laughs> the isms, whatever. But what college doesn't let you know is that you are going to meet a lot of different people. Sometimes in the brochures they say, hey, you meet a lot of friends. <laughs> You're going to meet a lot of people with diverse opinions. They're never going to say, hey, don't talk to that nigga. <laughs> don't. Sometimes it's okay to be a fucking bully for your own self-care. It's <laughs> chill as shit. Don't worry. I met one guy. Hopefully he's doing good. Don't edit this up. If I die, we know who did it. His name was Red Beard. He knows exactly who the fuck I'm talking to. You know exactly who you are. Hope you're doing good. These two guys right here, non-union. If he's watching this, he'll be like, oh god damn, bro. I knew him for a year and a half, and he told me his name multiple times. <laughs> But he was such an intriguing figure, I said, no, you're not going to the database. I'm gonna have his red beard. He had a beard like this, but it was red. <laughs> and I remember the first time I met him, he was like, hey, what's up, bro? I was on the bus. He goes, what's up, bro? Packed. What's up, bro? What's good? Shit, you from around here going to school? Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to school here, whatever. He's just like, all right, it's pretty lit. Uh, you know Cabela's, bro? It's <laughs> fucked apart. I didn't know what Cabela's was. I was like, ooh, a little restaurant or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> a little Kenyan, you know what I'm saying? 
I didn't know how to pronounce it at the time. I was like, no, no, I fuck with King. Kind of like a weird sushi roll. He's like, yeah, you're fuck Cabells. I'm like, no, I never heard of the place. He goes, are you, are you fucking kidding me, bro? Dude, I got this from there. And he showed me, he showed me his gun. I was like, let me calm down. It was a Beretta, okay? If he was gonna do any harm, he was gonna give me what? A little, what, a, a gut shot with a Beretta bullet? <laughs> Eat my shorts. Okay? Come at me with the Desert Eagle and then I might tremble, okay? <laughs> People of color and women have to live under systematic oppression all the time. Suck my dick. <laughs> Death is the least of my problems, trust me. <laughs> I thought it was the last time I was gonna see him. No. A couple weeks later, found out we're in the same class. What's the class about? International policy. I'm like, all right, he's just gonna shut the fuck up the whole time. Yep. I believe this nigga probably made up the Reddit page called like r subreddit. Yo, what the fuck? Because that's his emotional response to everything. I remember one time we were just reading a book about this guy just being like, yo, terrorism's bad. He was he took the book and goes. Yo, like, I get, he hit the book like, yo, I get this? But what the fuck is he talking about? How do you fight, no, 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 how do you fight? I can understand fighting logic. I get that, you can use little tricks here. How do you fight illogical bullshit? How do you do that? That's magic, you just go, I don't know. And he goes, exactly! How do you fight that? It's a whole, close to a year of that. I remember our final project. We were talking about Russia. Russia just had invaded Ukraine. Now, Russia didn't just say they invaded Ukraine. They went, uh, we just had our friends, the little green men. They just popped in and said, chip, chip, cheerio. <laughs> also, if I was a dictator, I would definitely say, chip, chip, cheerio. Little tagline. Little Beretta shot. But we had a whole panel of five to six people speaking. We all talked about the, the social aspects, uh, the geopolitical aspects of Russia invading a sovereign nation. We've done weeks, close to like a month or two of research. We were all boring as fuck in talking about this. That's why we all got fucking not A's. We all got full credit. I got full credit. I almost forgot where I came from. I almost forgot. Now I'm not black. This motherfucker right here, Redbeard, he's looking at all of us talking. And I just, you know, if someone's talking, you know, in your group especially, you should be supportive. Maybe you're like, hey. Hey. Yo, good point, dude. Um, fam, good shit, dog. He kept looking at us like, like, are you dumb face? Are you dumb face? No, you keep that when you're getting your fucking tax return, you're waiting at the DMV, or you're fucking someone that you kinda like. That's only, am I wrong? I'm not. I'm not. He finally speaks, this is what he does. I don't know what the fuck, this was beautiful and fucked up at the same time. He goes, okay, you guys done yet? All right, here we go, grab some chalk. Okay, right here, this is Russia. This is Ukraine. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, all right, now we got Germany somewhere over here. What are they gonna do? Ooh, I'm Merkel, I'm Angela Merkel. Ooh, I'm crying, I'm crying right now. Oh shit, Gazprom, that's the fucking gas distributing center from Russia. Yo, they gave us, this a 60-40 relationship. Boom, 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 economic warfare, dog. It's done. He sits back down. Full credit. How much time do I get? One minute? Perfect. Alright, I'll leave you guys with some grunts, groans, and eye rolls. Okay, Evergreen made me to an anarchist. No, not the fun way, in the Khadija Abraham way. Everybody hates us except us. We think we're mad cute. <laughs> and we are. We are gorgeous. So... 
I don't do coke anymore. <laughs> I've been known to dabble. But I remember someone uh, having an argument with someone uh, here at Evergreen, and they were like, yo, I'm very much anti-gun, which I get. I understand that, you're anti-gun? Boom, period, gotcha. But this other cat who I respect, he was like a pro-gun individual because he lived in the countryside, right? There was not a lot of cops around. I was like, all right, whatever, I don't care. And they were arguing, and I found when people are in arguments, I hate everyone, but at the same time, I love them. So I was like, pro-gun? Anti-gun? Yeah, you know, I'm anti-poison. <laughs> like, I just make arguments about me. <laughs> He's like, yeah, they just looked at me like the way you guys are looking at me now. It's like, what the fuck, that came out of left field. But it's true. It's true. I remember saying, I was like, yo, what a petty way to kill somebody. <laughs> it's not right. And they both walked away. <laughs> and then the last little bit of anarchist cool shit that I did was, uh, oh, no. Yeah. Someone was having uh, an argument about uh, being anti-jail, how we should abolish all jails, and then an individual was like, no, we can't do that for the next like 30, 50 years because that would fucking disrupt our systems, right? And I didn't give a fuck because I was snooted the fuck up. <laughs> I was on that blow. <laughs> Bobby Brown, my teeth were grinding. So hard, it was like a middle school dance. They were grinding so hard. <laughs> Y'all sluts know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? We're all sluts. We all grind out in middle school dance. Come on. So you guys, you're non-union. Fuck you. I'm just playing. I'm kidding. I love non-union for life. I remember they were just pro-jail, anti-jail, pro-jail, anti-jail. And I was like, you know what we should do? We should add astrological signs into sentencing. Does anybody disagree? And I will... <laughs> Sir? Not at all? You and Aries. <laughs> Honestly, it'd be fucked up if we did, but like, if we trust that shit for love and breakups, we should be like, oh, okay, most of the world trusts this shit, let's throw it in. Larceny. Mm. It's three weeks. Prison. What's your astrological sign? Gemini. Gemini. Yo, what's your rising? <laughs> yo, yo, her regular ass is Gemini. What's your rising? Aquarius. Aquarius. <laughs> I don't. Wait, what was that? What was that? You said, uh, maybe. That helps. That helps. <laughs> you see how fucked up that shit is? Why are you using it in love? <laughs> then again, I have a Pisces, so I'm anti everything unless it's me. So, alright, guys, my name's Rob Tedesco. Give it up for your host.